What's going on guys, John Alder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to finish up our music slider for our MP3 player with Kenter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to finish up our music slider, we've got a couple of odds and ends to work on. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video we knocked out a lot of this slider, and we could pick a song and we could play it, and we can move it around, but now, when we hit pause, you notice it continues to go. When we hit stop, it continues to go. If we delete a song up here, it continues to go. So we can, right? So it kind of does a little weird thing there. So we've got a couple little things here and there we need to tweak and uh, shouldn't take too long, a few minutes to knock it out, but we're gonna go ahead and knock those out in this video. So let's see, also we've got this label going on here. We just put this up here to get some information while we were hacking around on this. We don't want this to be up here in the final version. So let's go ahead and just get rid of that for now. So let's close this, head back to our code, come down to the bottom and we called this slider label. So I'm just gonna comment this out here and then I'm gonna hit control F on my keyboard and I'm gonna paste this in here and you can see we can click find to find any other instances of this and I'm gonna comment those out as well so we can keep going. This one's already been commented out. Okay, so that looks like that's all of those. All right, so let's just save this and run it really quickly just to make sure that that did the thing. Okay, so now that's gone. We might wanna change the size of this because remember we made this longer so that that would fit in. So let's go ahead and do that real quick while we're at it. That was up here at the top. Instead of 450, let's put this to um, 350 or eh, maybe 400 and we might tinker with this later just to see. So, okay, first things first, let's talk about the pause button. So let's come to our pause function, and here we go, and you'll remember we created this global paused variable, and whenever we click the, the pause button, it sets it to uh, true, and when we click it again, it sets it to false. So that allows us to toggle. Now we can reference this paused variable uh, outside of this function because we made it a, a global here and a global here. So what we want to do is come to our playtime function at the top here. And you remember this is the function that gets called and loops every second and does things. So what's happening when we click the pause button, this thing is continuing to loop. And as it does, it moves our slider to, you know, whatever extra value, and we worked on this in the last video. If you didn't see that, check the uh, playlist uh, in the comment section below, there's a link to that. So basically what we need to do is, inside of our if statement here, we need another elif to test to see whether or not the thing has paused. So let's just knock this out right here, let's go elif. So this is basically an if statement, so if paused, and that means if paused is true, what do we wanna do? Well, we don't wanna really do anything, so let's just kinda pass. But this, if this is true, and it has been paused, then the rest of this won't get called, right? And so our slider won't be incremented, hopefully. All right, so let's save this and run it, see if that worked. Pull this over, and ah, the size is okay, we can leave it like that for now. Let's add many songs. Let's pick one. Let me move it forward. Now when we pause it, this thing, stops, we unpause it, starts going again. Okay, so that was pretty easy. So now stop is a little bit different. When we hit the stop button, we're stopping everything, right? It's sort of resetting everything. And so we need to sort of reset this when that happens. So we kind of already know how to do this. I think we've already done this before. Uh, let's see, when we go to the stop function, right? And just right here at the top, we can call our status bar and dot config it. And we wanna set the text equal to zero. Actually, we've already done that down here, so we probably don't have to do it again, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. And then we wanna set my underscore slider dot config and set the value of that to zero. So, 
let's put a comment here, reset slider and status bar. Okay, and here let's stop song from playing. Okay, so that's sort of enough, but let's also create a status. So let's set stop variable to true. So we, let's let the world know that uh, we're stopping things. So let's create a global variable. Let's call it stopped and let's Let's set stopped equal to true. Now this is gonna be important for something else later on that I haven't even mentioned. We'll get to it in a couple of minutes, but for now, we'll just leave it like this. So when this stop function gets called, we're gonna stop the status bar, reset the slider, or stop the uh, slider from moving, reset it to zero, uh, hit the status bar back to zero, and then we're gonna set this variable, this global variable to stopped. And, and maybe outside of here, let's set global stopped and set stopped to false. So when the program just runs, stopped will get created, that variable will get created, just like we did with the pause button. And we'll set it to stop because we haven't stopped a thing if we've played the thing, right? Whatever. So up here, well, we'll just leave this for now. And like I said, I'll talk about this in just a couple of minutes. Now let's just save this to make sure this whole stop thing worked with our uh, slider before we get into anything else. So, all right, let's just do this. Add some songs. Did I mention it's Friday here in Vegas? I think I'm gonna do some hiking this weekend, very excited. So, all right, so let's move this forward. Hit stop, it stops. This gets reset to zero, to nothing, the status bar. This gets removed back to the start position and we're good to go. So, all right, let's play another song here. And let's delete this song. And we're still moving here. And also it's double timing. So we'll talk about that too in a second. So let's knock this one out. So let's head back over to our delete song stuff. So here it is, delete a song. And basically we can just call that stop function, right? Because it's gonna do all the things we wanna do. So let's just go ahead and do that. And let's do the same thing for delete all songs. Let's just call our stop function, right? Might as well. We could reset the status bar. We could, you know, move the slider back to zero and using the same code we just did in the stop function, or we could just call the stop function. So let's just do that. So, all right, let's save this and run it, see if that worked. So let's add a bunch of songs and let's play one. Let's remove that song and boom, it pops back to the zero, to the beginning. The song is now gone. Uh, let's play this one. And let's remove all the songs. And it pops it back to zero. Okay, so that worked. Now, let's run this again. And I wanna show you another weird thing that we need to fix. So let's add a bunch of songs here. And let's play one. Now watch the, st uh, the slider as it's moving a second along. What if we pause it and unpause it? It's still moving a second along and that's good. What if we stop it though? Goes back to zero. Well now what if we play another song? Okay, it seems to be going in nice steady state. If we stop it and then play it again, it seems to be going in a nice steady state. If we come up here and click play, now it's it's moving double time, right? Also, when we remove a song and then play another song, well, it's not doing it now, but it did it earlier, it, it moves faster, right? Well, that's because, so basically when we click a stop button or a delete button or any other button, this playtime thing, remember it's on a loop and it redoes itself every, every second here, right? So it may be continuing to loop, and if we start another song, it might do another version of this thing. So this is already looping, and then it creates another one, another 
instance of playtime that's also looping. And now we got two loops going at once and the seconds are, you know, getting bound up together. So one way we can get around that really quickly is we can just grab our stopped variable and just just up here at the top, let's go if stopped, uh, just return. And return breaks out of a function, it stops a function, it just returns. So this will, whatever instance is now going will not will stop. And there won't be now two instances of, of the thing running. So that will fix that jumping double thing. And if you're messing around and you have some other function that you're calling that's causing it to double jump, just do the same thing here, create another variable, set it to true or false, or set it to true, and then run an if statement to say if true, shut off this variable, just return. So let's put it in here, uh, check for double timing, I don't know, whatever. So okay, save that. So let's see, I think that's about it. There may be one more thing we need to work on. Let's come over here. And I'm not sure we have to check It just occurred to me. So if we play this song, and then we move forward, this doesn't get reset. Or if we move backwards, this doesn't get reset. Right, so we need to fix that really quick. So let's head over to our stopped function or our stop function. And just grab these two lines of code that we put in at the beginning of this video. And let's just go to our next song function. And when we do that, we'll just reset this right at the beginning of our next song function. We don't really want to call the stop function because we're not really stopping. We're moving it to the next song. And all these things are going to happen. And we're going to do the same thing for the previous song one, we'll just pop that in, go ahead and save this. Let's run back here. Try this one more time. Add a bunch of songs, let's play one. Let's fast forward. Now it gets reset. Okay. We hit pause. It stops or we hit stop, it stops. We hit play again. Uh Oh, now this isn't moving when we hit the play button again. So we can fix that really quickly that has to deal with that stopped variable we just made we just played with. So let's head up to our play function real quick. And stopped is now true. So when we hit play, let's add stopped equal false because we're playing it's no longer false. So let's go ahead and save this. Run this again, make sure that worked. Add a bunch of songs. Zoop. And let's play one. Stop. Let's play another one. Uh oh, this is still not working. Okay, so let's global. Stopped. We need to add this as global here so that the playtime function can pick it up, make it global in this function. And let's just comment this set stopped variable to false. So song can play. Save this, come back here, run it again. You can tell it's Friday. <laughs> All right. So let's play a song. Let's move it forward. Let's stop it. Let's play another song. And we're good to go. Move it forward move it back, stop it, play it, everything's good to go. So all right, I think we are probably done with this music slider it took us oh, what three or four different videos to, to knock it all out. Uh, you know, a little bit more complicated than some of the other things we've done lots of moving parts, but I don't think it's that much. Uh, it wasn't that tricky. So uh, yeah, a lot of fun. So we have a few more things we want to work on in this mp3 player, maybe add a volume slider or something like that. Um, I don't know, maybe some other things we'll work on, but we're almost to the end of this little uh, series and uh, that's been pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeby.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. And since it's Friday, I'll just mention 45 courses. If I sold them for $10 a course, that'd be $450. If I sold them for $20 a course, which is like not outrageous, 
that would be $900 for all of those courses. You're getting them for $49 with that coupon code. That is a tremendous deal. That's why I say it's insanely cheap. Uh, so definitely grab that if you're interested. Lots of good content. We're always adding more there. So anyway, join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Konami.com, and we'll see you in the next video.